Hi, I'm Ken. Today we're going to take a look at some new additions to my collection. Some friends of mine uh, inherited a collection of stamps that they didn't know what to do with, and they wondered if I would be interested in having them, and of course I was. I took a look at them. Uh, I promised that if I found anything special, I would return them to them and make sure they had a, a right of first refusal on them, and uh, let's take a look at what I found. When I tell people I collect stamps, I usually get one of two reactions. Either, oh my goodness, what a nerdy hobby. And fair, that is a nerdy hobby. Uh, the other reaction is, hey, I've got some old stamps from either a grandparent or a parent who's no longer with them. Maybe you could take a look at them, which, which is great. I'm happy to do that for anyone who wants me to take a look at an old collection. Usually that turns into, I don't really want them. Why don't you just keep those stamps? which I will take stamps from people. I have a lot here today from a friend who was in exactly that situation. I'll take the stamps from them, but I usually set it up with a caveat. Uh, one is that I'm happy to go through them and I wanna make sure that they can bear to part with them. Uh, the other thing is it, I tell them that if I find any value in those collections that I'm gonna let them know what the value is and give them a chance to uh, take them back and get the value. Certainly if I found an old Jenny invert in a box, I would make sure that a person got that, that collection back. The other thing is I look at these stamps with um, a sense of, of the person inside of the collection, the person who spent a lifetime collecting and trying to understand what was in their, their uh, uh, collecting goals. So I look at these collections, I take a uh, peek and I try and get a sense of the person that's in there. A little preview. I found this drawing in the front cover of an older album in the box. This looks like a child's drawing done in fountain pen, so it shows its age. Imagine letting a child use a fountain pen today. Anyway, this kind of drawing is typical of what I've seen at the start of older albums. This one, a mark of ownership. Let's expand this image to show a little more. I've obscured Walter's last name, although he passed away in 2002, but it's not important to this video. Walter was born in 1913, so at the time he got this album, apparently as a Christmas present in 1923, he would have been 10 years old. The fourth bureau issues would have been the stamps that he would have been receiving in the mail at his house. You can see the early history of this album. It looks like he got a thousand stamps with it that first year, then in February of 1925, he got another thousand stamps, along with 200 U.S. stamps. But Walter was getting some encouragement for his stamp collection during that time. I found these two covers in the box addressed to a young Walter dated May of 1924. These would have been contemporaneous uses of these covers, sent by someone encouraging his collection. I say that because these are clearly philatelic covers. That is, they weren't sent as ordinary mail, but as collector's pieces. The postage rate for a letter at the time was two cents. And this set came in one, two, and five cent denominations. So the first letter has two stamps when it only needed the one. And the other letter uses a five cent stamp to post a two cent letter. Also, they were posted at the same time by the same person. Actually, as I look at the handwriting, I wouldn't be surprised if Walter sent these to himself. But there's more here than just Walter's childhood collection. Let's unpack this box. So let's open up this box and see what's inside of it. Uh, give it the, the respect it deserves. Uh, I always think when I'm opening a box like this that the person who put it together put it together with love. And so in my heart, I want to make sure that I'm looking at someone's collection with the same heart and love that they put into it. And hopefully when I'm done giving a look at it and, and looking at what's inside, uh, I'll be able to tell their loved one kind of something about the collector that their, that their loved one was. Uh, I look at a collection like this, I see um, on first glance uh, some bags and things and it suggests a collector who, who was not particularly uh, careful with what was in their collection. So I'm guessing based on initial impression that the uh, person collecting these stamps um, wasn't making a pristine world-class collection. It's, there's no problem with that. In fact, I find that often that the collections that are more uh, modest are the ones that have the more interesting story to tell about the people inside of them. Anyway, let's unbox and see what's in here. Uh, taking this box, this bag right off the top, 
Uh, it's a bag with a box in it. Let's slide the box out. I see an old Scott catalog from 1980, and then a bunch of bags. Let's set this out here. This bag is empty. We'll pop it down. Uh, some loose stamps in the packet. Oh, here's a nice bag of on paper stamps. Uh, worldwide paper lot. That'll be fun to go through. Yeah, some nice, some nice good on paper. Uh, nice thing to, to pay attention to. This box, like I said, here's an old Scott catalog from 1980. Also in here, yeah, some nice interesting philatelic literature. Uh, what else have we got here? Postage stamps of the United States, 1847 to 1955. This is a post office catalog. Excellent. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this will be fun to go through. Um, also in this box are envelopes. Envelopes seem to have stuff in some of them. Some of them are, uh, ooh, there's, so there's lots of interesting things inside of these envelopes and postage uh, of various sorts. I'm gonna have to go through this with a fine tooth comb. Interesting, 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 okay. Uh, some first aid covers, very typical kinds of things. Really nice cover of Harry Truman. Um, and you can see that this is a, a hologram foil uh, cover uh, envelope and it's full of stamps again. Yeah, so very interesting. I'm going to have to go through everything in here very carefully to see what's in here. Okay. Uh, again, Envelopes upon envelopes of sorted stamps. Oh, we're gonna have fun looking through this. I have a box very similar to this that I keep all my envelopes and, and sorted stamps for. Anyway, good. Envelopes in a box. We'll put that in there for now. Another bag. Ugh. This one has a Coin World magazine in it. Yeah, okay. Very common for stamp collectors to also be coin collectors. And indeed, this bag is full of uh, coins and, and currency. So, interesting, interesting. Okay, we're gonna have to look through this. I am not a coin and currency collector, but I can certainly use the same skills to understand what's going on in here. A lot of interesting coins, a medallion here from the Pointer Club of America. Some Irish bills. Okay, this, this whole box bag seems to be coins and the like. Okay, good. I'll put this back and go through it more carefully later. Ah, this is promising. This is a modern postage stamp album. These are um, kind of the workhorse albums of the 1950s. And let's just take a quick look in here. Oh, I already see some good things. This one is uh, from 1921. There's a very nice stamp right off the bat. Um, oh, there's some really nice stamps in this album. We'll have to take a more deep dive look through it. Okay, excellent. Oh, very fun. Okay, so this will be a fun album to go through. What else have we got here? An envelope with, what's in this? Uh, a Berlin stamp sheet. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so this is the other workhorse album, usually for younger collectors, my first stamp album. Uh, it came in a kit. Yep, that whole kit is here. Oh, some stamps falling out of it. Nothing too impressive there. Let's take a look at what's on the side of this, see if it has any stamps in it. Yeah, this one's pretty empty. This one may be all but empty, which is fine and pretty common for these albums. So kids get started in stamp collecting uh, they get a few stamps, they put them in there, and then they lose interest. So we'll take a look at that, but it's probably mostly empty. 
In here is another envelope. These, these um, flag and coat of arms stamps are, are usually come with these first stamp albums as a way to um, decorate the album before the kid has a lot of stamps. Some stamped hinges, these are nice, nice old hinges. Um, what else is in here? More on paper stamps, a nice cover, some first aid covers, some packets, that's interesting. This says it's from Gimbals. I know that Gimbals was a stamp selling organization at one point, Macy's and Gimbals, but they also sold stamps. That envelope's empty. Uh, oh, this is a whole box of hinges. Those are actually not bad. Hinges are, um, antique hinges tend to be much better than modern hinges, and so getting a, a lot like this is always a little fun. Um, interesting. What else have we got here? More loose on paper stamps. More loose on paper stamps. And an empty envelope, okay. And what's in here? Look at that. A really nice kind of young collector's starter kit. A lot of loose stamps. I will get lost in this for months. So, very nice uh, collection of loose stamps. I'm sure there'll be some joy in this packet. Excellent, so let's set that aside. Next, we've got an old Statesman statement album. This is the next upgrade album that people would have gotten from the, from the uh, red one we saw earlier. Let's see if this one has any stamps in it. Yeah, oh, this one has some stamps in it. Um, it looks like somebody got this album, got started, but really didn't make a lot of progress on it. So yes, there's some stamps. Let me move to the very first section, which is usually the US. Let's see if they've got anything in here. Yeah, a few things in here, but this album hasn't barely been used. So yeah, okay, that'll be uh, interesting to go through. The album's in good condition. We'll see what comes of that. What else have we got in here? Stamp News from 1976. Uh, there we go. And okay, finally. Oh, these don't smell so good. So here's a bunch of sheets in some plastic sheet protectors. Oh, and they've got an odor to them that is not good. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go through here and probably do something about the odor. Anyway, that's this set. Uh, box is otherwise empty. I'll be going through them and letting you know what I come up with out of this set. So when I opened it up, something in the box had an odd smell and I narrowed it down to this plastic here, this plastic sheeting. It's outgassing something. It smells yucky like vinegar and must together. Anyway, I'm gonna throw these out there. Um, I'm not gonna keep that smell in the collection. What was in these uh, sheets were a whole bunch of, of essentially postage grade sheets of stamps. Um, their edges are, are ripped, so they're not good as sheets. Not that sheets have any value anyway. Also, interestingly, inside this packet were these, um, sorry, I guess I can't turn it sideways, were these old uh, lottery tickets. So those are interesting and beautiful. So the first thing I went through in this collection was the coins. You might wonder why, since I'm not a coin collector, by rights I should have left this to the end. I'm really not interested in coins, but when I was doing my first sort, I ran across this. This is a 1913 gold coin, something known as a quarter eagle. It has a face value of $2.50. Just look how shiny it is. It's amazing. I didn't polish it at all. Gold doesn't really tarnish. It's one of the things that makes it so desirable. Anyway, when I saw this coin, I knew I'd better take a closer look at the rest of the coins because this thing was certainly valuable. I looked up the gold coin and found that it was worth a few hundred dollars all by itself. Unfortunately, I didn't find any more gold coins in the box, as if one wasn't enough, but I did find a whole lot more value in the box. There were a whole lot of U.S. silver coins, including three Morgan silver dollars from the 1800s. Beyond those were a number of foreign coins, some of which were also silver. 
Even more, there were a ton of loose U.S. coins that didn't have any silver content, but might have some individual value. In face value alone, it was almost $100. The paper money was interesting for a collector, but not notably valuable. Altogether, this currency collection might be worth around $1,000. This was more than I felt comfortable keeping, so I reached back to the friends who gave it to me and told them what I'd found. They decided to take them back, find a buyer, and make a donation from the proceeds. I think that's an excellent plan. At very least, that gold coin is a beautiful keepsake, and the loose change will keep their parking meters fed for years. But enough of the coins. We're here to look at stamps. There was something else confusing about this collection. It had three stamp albums in it, but only one of them had significant stamps inside of it. The red album in the middle was Walter's album for sure. It was loaded with stamps. In some places, the organization is wonky, but the stamps are all hinged in place. None of them are glued. And there were a lot of stamps in that album. The album on the right is a copy of my first stamp album. It was published in 1965. At the time, Walter would have had this red stamp album for about 42 years. The kid's album had just 18 stamps in it, and one of them was glued down. Walter, who had 42 years of collecting experience, wouldn't have glued down a stamp at this point in his collecting uh, journey. There's really no way that this child's album on the right was Walter's. The album on the left could have been an aspirational upgrade for Walter. It was published in 1967. I could definitely see Walter buying it to refresh his collection. But again, the contents don't suggest that. This Statesman album had 117 worldwide stamps and another 24 U.S. stamps in it. They were scattered all over the place, like someone was putting in what they had, not like someone was methodically transferring stamps into a new home. Again, I'm confident this wasn't Walter's album either. There was also that box of envelopes. I wish I'd taken a picture of some of the contents, but I didn't. Uh, that box was filled with a lot of neatly organized stamps that were contemporary, that whoever was saving those envelopes had saved their stamps from mail. It looked actually like they were saving stamps from a business mail uh, sort into that into those envelopes. Uh, there were some of the covers that Walter had um, saved in his collection in that box as well. But overall, there was another name on a lot of the envelopes in that uh, box. That name was the same name as the friends who gave, same last name as the friends who gave me this collection. Uh, that name I'm just not going to share with you for privacy's sake, but the first name was Robert J, or in some cases it was Mrs. Robert J. So I'm pretty sure the collector here was uh, my friend's relative, uh, either the husband or the wife. It's hard to be sure about that in the contents of these books, but in here was what you might call a, a, a storage, a hoarding in some sense. I don't mean that in a negative sense. It's what stamp collectors tend to do in the early phase of collecting. I have a hoard of stamps of my own, of of common uh, modern issues. Uh, they've neatly sorted these into these envelopes. They're ripped off the corners of envelopes for the most part, sometimes saving the cancel, sometimes not, uh, but very neatly and carefully organized into their own subsets. So, uh, there's something going on with this. I took, when I needed to stamp from that pile, I took one off and soaked it off the envelope and added it to my collection. But mostly these were stamps that I had, all pretty common. The ones that I didn't need, I bundled up for, uh, the stamp museum and gave them as a donation to the stamp museum. Uh, at some point they'll find their way into some kids' hands, I'm sure, and they'll be able to soak off these delights for themselves. Still, Walter's fingerprints are really all over this box, and it seemed he continued to save envelopes well into the 1970s. There was a mix of Roberts, or maybe it was Mrs. Roberts' covers, along with, with Walter's stamps. This particular letter, though, is interesting. It's a reply from Richard Nixon's White House. This is a printed reply card, though, and not a personally signed letter, but still a neat cover and a card. I'd have saved this even if I wasn't a stamp collector. Besides the stamp album and a few dozen covers, I think the rest of this box belonged to Robert or his wife. So this is really two collections combined. Uh, my friend's relative was, it seems from what I'm seeing, primarily a coin collector, but they still saved and collected stamps like um, anyone with a collecting gene would do. 
at some point it looks like Walter's collection was inherited by them or given to them. It's hard to tell exactly. Uh, but they pulled that into their uh, collecting uh, world and uh, it eventually found its way into my hands, two collections in one. Uh, so let's take a look at what we found inside. Of course, I've already shown you some stamps from Botswana and Benadir in previous videos. So let's start with this early U.S. Washington stamp. This is the first stamp that caught my eye from Walter's album. The shade of this stamp is much rustier than is typical for Scott 11A. I thought I might have found one of the rarer 10A stamps. I had a friend at the museum look it over for me, and unfortunately this is just one of the many shade variants of the 11A. Still, it's an excellent learning for me and a great addition to my collection. The next page on the album had these stamps on them. These are banknote stamps. The ones on the top row are quite common, but the stamps on the second and third row are treasures. The higher the denomination on these stamps, the more rare they are. The color on that 12 cent Henry Clay stamp is so vibrant. I've never seen one so nice. The purples are just beautiful. Those are two nice examples of the 15 cent Daniel Webster stamp. I still have some work to do to check if these two stamps are different shades. Finally on the third row, those two 30 cent stamps show Alexander Hamilton and are different shades for sure. These are really nice. This was the next page in Walter's album. Again, there are some real treasures here. You can see that early airmail stamp tucked in the top corner. There was another one like that on two other pages. I can't quite figure out why Walter would have saved multiple copies on different pages, but it's a view into his style of collecting. Those first two rows of stamps are from the Columbian Exposition series. These are fairly common up to the 10 cent denomination, but I think that 10 cent stamp might be unused. The next two rows are from the Trans Mississippi Exposition issue. That 4 cent is pretty beat up, but the 5 cent is in beautiful condition. I was also surprised to see that 50 cent denomination here. That's quite a special stamp. Moving away from the US for now, these overprint stamps are the first stamps from Ireland. The first two of them are Scott numbers 1 and 2 from Ireland never seen any of these overprints before. I'm still trying to figure out the stamp on the left. It's clearly a different color from the one I already had on the right, but I can't tell if that's because the one on the right is faded or the one on the left is the more unusual shade of the stamp. For now, I've put the question mark on its identification. Either it's a great replacement for my previously faded stamp or a new shade for me. And here are some other stamps that I just haven't sorted into my albums yet. There are some nice stamps from Newfoundland, I always love those. Some nice larger format Canadian regular issue stamps that I needed. And finally, there's some decent George V stamps that I need to type out. Still a bit of interesting work left for me on these stamps. So altogether, I found over 3,000 stamps in this collection. About 500 of them was found a way into my collection, so I'm really happy with that outcome. Uh, equally interesting is I've got about five months of collecting and sorting joy out of going through this box, so I had a blast looking through them. I also think I made um, a connection, a bond with two historical collectors, and I got a lot of joy out of kind of building and uh, honoring their collecting journey and folding their collecting joy into my collection. And perhaps someday, somewhere, somebody will get a hold of my collection and give it the same care and love folding it into theirs that I did with this collection.